Welcome everyone to another episode of the Adeptus Ridiculous Podcast. My name's DK Diamantes, my host is Bricky. He's going to be telling us all about the most ridiculous, hence the name, stuff in Warhammer 40k. But before he does, if you enjoy today's podcast, head over to patreon.com slash adeptusridiculous and consider supporting us. If you do, you get access to our Discord, a bunch of really fly emotes that you can use on Discord or on YouTube, or actually I guess the YouTube thing is separate, whatever, this is going off the rails, doesn't matter. Uh, there's also HD posters and a lot of cool stuff, all right? Patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous. And, uh, Bricky, I think, I think you've got some new shit today besides book club and merch, right? I can't believe, DK, that you got flustered at yourself for saying your own intro. I can't believe fuck you, man. I, I can believe fuck me, man. <laughs> <laughs> Fair On enough. On this podcast, I can. <laughs> Uh, yes, so book club, of course, we're doing Twice Dead King Rain. I'm already two hours in, and it's really good. Um, so do do that. Uh, for the Orchidate.com store, the dice have been restocked. So go ahead and check that out. There's also a deal if you buy dice and something else. You get 50% off the whole order until the end of January, so there's not much left. Uh, but I'm skipping past that quickly because we have mm -hmm. our first ever fun little collaboration here, so we have had a fan since the early days of the podcast known as Electric Squid Entertainment, and they have had their own, like, local game store. It is simply called Collectible Squids. CollectibleSquids.com. It is in the description. And we're working with them for, uh, like, for this first big official kind of partnership where they will offer Warhammer stuff at a lower price than normal with a flat $10 shipping to the U.S. Uh, they ship outside the U.S. as well, but it isn't flat dollar or 10. You have to pay for that one, of course. Mm -hmm. um, and they're just a small little, you know, self-made business down in Florida. And, well, basically, if you use code ADRIC, A-D-R-I-C, all caps, just in case, you get yourself an extra discount and... You uh, you you get some uh, you you give some money to your boys over here, boys Let's and girl, go. or boys and and vat grown baby. <laughs> She's a two foot tall gremlin vat baby, yeah. Gremlin vat baby that I, I identify yep. as a gremlin vat baby. So wow. once again, collectiblesquids.com, cheaper Warhammer prices for your stuff, flat ten dollars shipping to the U.S. and with code ADRIC, you get an extra discount and support us. So it's basically if you just want some. Warhammer stuff, that's where you can go, and uh, it's exciting to start with. You know, they've been a fan of the podcast for a while, so it's very big-time yeah. excitement. So that's where we're at. Go ahead and check it out. Link is in the description. All should be good and fun. And besides that, I got one last announcement. Ooh, yeah? What else? Yes, it's the art contest. Oh, sick! Let's go! Tell them about it, Bricky. Tell All them right. about it. So, uh, well, you remember what the topic is today, don't you, DK? Uh, of course I do. You actually not? I... Shit. Anyway, <sighs> to, to our wonderful viewers, uh, we had a fun idea. So, a long time ago, we talked about Imperial Knights, and I had my fun little idea about knight couple type thing. And then, like, immediately after that, I got hit with a <laughs> shitload of fan art of said couple. And you guys really seemed like you liked it. And it was kind of dope and very heartwarming. So we thought, why not hold a contest for creating your own free blade knight? So it's an art contest. So it's simply put, you create your own piece of artwork, some kind of you know digital artwork, just just art. It's art, whatever yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, of your own free blade knight of the knight and the person piloting the knight. It's a free blade, so it could be whatever the fuck you want. Imperial anything. chaos, anything doesn't matter. Whatever type of knight, who cares? You're creating your own free blade knight. And what we're gonna do is compile compile all the submissions. You may send them to our uh, email in the description or go ahead and shoot it to us at Twitter, um, especially if you have an art account, because then we can, you know, go ahead and if you are one of the winners, you, we can go ahead and retweet you and, you know, get some extra people yeah, coming yeah. over uh, and make sure to sign them, you know, give them a good watermark or something because. Oh, good call. Yeah. Uh, and stealing it. Exactly. And uh, it's. It's entirely just for enjoyment. We're not using it for anything. We're not putting it in a video game. We're not <laughs> We're not those fucking people. Um, it is entirely just for fun. 
and the top 10 people will get $50 USD with third hey. place getting 100, second place getting 250, and first place getting 500 bucks. Yo, big um, money, big bucks. Let's go. Let's get so, those submissions in. Can I enter? Yeah, sure, dude. Good Let's luck. Let's go. Money, money, money. This, I'm American, man. I need those dollary dues. That's why, that's why, yeah, we did the Demon Kill Lava because of the dollary dues. Yeah, we sure did. So anyway, like I said, email in the description or send it to us on Twitter. Make sure you sign a watermark it. Free Blade Knight art of both the knight and the pilot. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there's no bonus points if you build the model itself, but let's say if you did, it's the tiebreaker, whatever, but yeah, it could it's, be. it's mainly about the art. You can do a free blade couple, too, if you want, like Bricky's idea. If you want to do a couple or like a family, that's okay, too. You can do a group. I don't give a shit. Yeah, yeah. you can do whatever. As, you do partners. As long as they're free blades. As long as they're free blade knights, go to town. It doesn't Cust have to be just one. Customize your knights. And yeah. uh, we will, the contest will end at the end of February. So you got a bit over a month. And then we will make a video with all the submissions in March. And uh, yeah, so, you know, good luck. Best of I'm luck, GLHF, GGEZ, uh, KYS, etc. <laughs> Not that last one. Um, <laughs> That's what the guys in StarCraft would always tell me. Yeah, oh no, that means create yourself. With, oh, the K is with a it's a create with a K because we're avant garde here. The, if the night if anything the knights are it's avant garde. So yeah. DK, knight you yourself. Know, that's what it is. Knight because you get the queen to knight. You, knight, knight, knight yourself. Your, knight yourself. Let's go. Let's go now. Now <laughs> you should knight yourself now. now. <laughs> so, so DK, stupid. do you know what the fucking topic is now? I would assume knights. Yeah, you dingus. Wait, but didn't we have an episode on knights already? That's why. We like, do another I... one. Oh, didn't we have sweet. an episode on Necrons already, DK? Didn't we already have five episodes on Necrons, Bricky? Do we have five? Maybe I we do know. have five. Yeah. I, I just remember someone making a sarcastic comment about another Necron episode. Haven't they already done five? It's well, like, that's I don't right. know. Have we? But they yeah, no, they I probably I, like Eldar. I, I, I knew the art contest was going to be on nights. I just didn't realize that, like, we were going to do another night episode. But I guess it makes sense. So, cool. Let's learn about nights. Nights are yeah, well, dope. I feel like if you're going to be the person to draw nights, you'll be clicking on the night episode. So, That's know. fair. That's, that's um, a good call. It is about nights, but it's more so about night households this time. Ooh. Specific night households. So, kind of okay. like how when we talked about orcs, we talked about the various orc, uh, uh, you know, uh, faction or orc clan. Clans, yeah. that's what it is. Or clans, and um, so today we're doing things about different kinds of night houses. Now there are a couple we already talked about in the original episode, the Quester Mechanicus ones like House Tyrannus, House Crast, House Raven, House Cadmus, Griffith, Hawkshrow, etc. But there's a shitload of Imperial houses, a shitload. a shitload, and so I have a giant list of them right <laughs> here, and I thought, why not together, we just like pick one. Oh, okay. And just see what it is. Okay. So, Dude. DK, give me a letter. Just throw me a letter. I don't care uh, what letter it is. J. J. All right. In terms of J, uh, we... Do we have no J? Uh-oh. Oh, no. Did I did I hit the, the jackpot right off the bat? There, There's, like, literally almost every letter here, and except for J. Wow. I'm so sorry, I am DK. amazing. I I'm so proud. Zeros. Let's go. Uh, hit me with a Z. A Z. There is one Z. Yes. There is one Z. Oh my God. Imagine <laughs> this this entire list and you choose the one letter. It's like fucking Wheel of Fortune. I'll take an L, Pat. Ooh, no L's. Sorry. Spin again. No, oh no. Don't worry. You're getting L's. <laughs> Oof. Oof. Uh, this is House Zavora. Nice. Uh, House Zavora comes from Mars and their colors are red and white. This is their Night Crest. Pretty dope looking, actually. Um, like, like a squid looking, say hey, squid looking thing oh, with like a, yeah. like a skull. It says, this house has its origins among scions stranded on Mars during the Age of Strife. Now, however, they did not originally intend to stand guard over Mars, but the, the warp storms and all that stuff happened, the Age of Strife and things. 
Yeah. Um, due to its history, they have a strong ties with the cult mechanicus. In fact, it is said that the members are said to exchange a single organ for an augmented counterpart come their ascension to the throne mechanicum when they are to do the thing with their brain, you know? Oh, that's dope. And then further augmentation will be borne by more seasoned warriors, uh, with the greatest sign of devotion being permanent entombment in their knight armor. Oh boy, that's that's kind of grim dark. Um, being forever entombed in the armor—that's a little cool. Is that's that's uh, we picked a cool one to start off with. Also, their logo—I know what it reminds me of. It reminds me of like a uh, Marvel uh, and and Hydra. You know the Hail oh, Hydra. it does. Captain it does America, look like Hydra. Hydra. It's Hydra. It is a little. It's a mechanic is Hydra. Yeah, yeah. It's totally Hydra. Yeah. Um, so apparently because of their extreme mechanicus religious practices in defiance of the imperial truth, the Great Crusade, they used to be only stationed in Mechanicum fleets because everyone fucking hated them. Ah, um, So uh, by the Horus Heresy, they had about like a, a little under 400 knights with over 100 in sealed vaults waiting for pilots. And over half of them uh, were on Mars during the Horus Heresy with none surviving the civil war there, with oh. actually reports of quite a few of them siding with the traitors in a tra oh. in a traitor house of Kelbor Hall. Yikes. Uh, so they all went traitor? None of them actually... They either er, all died or all of them went traitor? Sorry, not a traitor house. <clears throat> Kelbor Hall was the fabricator general of the Mechanicum during the heresy, and he joined the sides of Horus. He was oh. a, he was the um, dark mechanicum fabricator general. Oh, okay, that makes a lot more sense. Okay. So they joined him, right? And uh, in or in order or during the Mars thing. So they're ones on Mars. So about half went to chaos, basically, and the other half didn't. Oof, that's a that's a big loss losing half of your knights to chaos. That's that that feels like the Dark Angels level where it's like, hey, you guys. Uh... You guys are a little sus because uh, you're obviously you got traitors in your ranks. So um, sussy baka, as it were. Don't don't do that. <laughs> uh, as for no knights, there's two of them at the moment. Uh, the one of them is the Veiled Hunter, which is a knight errant. And if you forget what a knight errant is, uh, the I knight do. errant is the knight that has the um, the melta, I believe, and then the chainsaw. Oh, okay. Uh, and then that one is piloted by a, a pilot known as Vincent Nyadias, seen as one of the house's uh, preeminent beast slayers during the Great Crusade due to his performance against a bio colossi. Oh. Um, his record saw him appointed as a seneschal of war. For those not located on Mars in the Horus Heresy, over the war he scored three Titan kills. And wrote Ooh. several tactical manifests that were disseminated to loyalist households. Damn. What's a bio colossi? Uh, I'm assuming it's an enormous, like, beast of some kind. Oh, okay. Like, I wasn't sure if it was, like, a tyranid, because, like, biomass, bio colossus, or if it was just a random ass, uh, um, xeno, scum thing. So. I mean, it could be against, it could be a, a tyranid, uh, oh, here it is. It was from something called the Grand Sathian Dominion, which was a Xenos Empire. Oh. Uh, though after it was fought during the Great Crusade, though after a seven-year war, they were finally like exterminated. So they were like really, really big organic fuckers that just a separate race. Disgusting. Yeah. Uh, and the other one was someone known as the Omnisaya's Will, which was <laughs> uh, Knight Porthorian. Porthorian. Uh, All right. Porthorian, which is a class of Imperial Knight as well. Uh, and this was piloted by a guy named Gaffrael Bex, who was permanently sealed inside his suit. Oh, man. That must suck to be permanently sealed. Inside. I mean, I guess if you're Admech, you probably wouldn't mind because that's like a dream come true. No flesh. I'm entombed in steel. Um, but, man, can you imagine, like, how do I go to the bathroom in this thing? He's got a big titan, Bro, titan you... knight that's just popping a squat in the field. Like, oh, damn it. I don't need to worry about this anymore. They're Punk. admech. That's true. Like, they, they, they love it. Like, how do the admech don't use the bathroom in general? Having any biological shit is like, ew. That's, that's, that's true. It's that's not pretty cringe holy. for an admech, yeah. But the, oh. the guys in the titans aren't, well, I guess they're, well, I guess they're admech too, aren't they? The ones in the titans. 
on Mars, the, the Zavora or whatever. I guess they're ad mech. Oh yeah, as well, well there's normally like a like a well, they're not necessarily ad mech. The um, knights aren't ad mech so speak, but they work heavily with like with ad mechs. So they kind of take yeah. a little bit of their culture and do yeah. that kind of stuff. That makes sense. Okay. So Still, I think it'd be funny for like uh uh someone entombed in a titan to just lose it for a second and be like oh hold on guys and he just there's a titan popping a squad on the field and the fucking like some muni ammunition dumps out yeah. uh, so um and another knight for ex uh, household for example one a very very light one that we can discuss is uh like house terran i mentioned the before house terran is the tranquil worlds of voltorus which th oh, these right. these guys terran are like the the hoity toity of the hoity toity yeah um these are the guys uh if, if i'm not if i am if i remember they're the ones who have to stand and like listen to the the deeds being told for like three four hour long oh. like just the thousand canticles of war long awaited oh. and they have to constantly listen to their shit yep uh, that, that does not sound like a fun uh a fun thing to do no, it does yeah, not. We're, we're gonna sit here all day and all night and just listen to how great we are. And it's like, oh, I know, I was there. You were, you were around. You got it. I get it. Give me a, give me a letter. Uh, D. D. All right, we've got a lot of D. Hey, uh, all right, yes, Shoot. we do. A. Uh, all right, she's in between one and eight. One and nine, actually. Four. One, two, three, four. House Donar. <laughs> All right. House Donar, also known as the Perceptor House, was a night house of the Imperium. Uh, their night world is called Moloch, like M-O-L-E-C-H, and their colors are green and gold. Oh. Um, they got pretty interesting looking, uh, uh, whatever it's called there, their, their sigil. They are assigned to the Imperial Garrison on Molech, um, only a few <laughs> short light years from Terra itself, very similar to Terra in size and orbit, and it has a moon, um, though it also has home to thick jungles filled with savage beasts that the night houses keep at bay or hunt for sport. So you got a little bit of like a, a little bit of like a um, Katachan thing there. Okay. Um, the assigned to the Imperial Gears of Moloch, Donar Knights have no names or titles. Their <laughs> identity determined instead by their strength and reputation. They were assigned to oversee the Western Marches and Preceptory Line and battle the deadly beasts of the jungles. It is said that the first Donar Knights were descended from the Guardian Perceptor, Blade Master to the First High Knight. When the High King, or the First High King, when the High King passed, the Perceptor walked into the East to face Moloch's beasts and vowed to defend mankind from their threat. Over the years, Man. they became known as the Preeminent Hunting House often competing for glory during hunting expeditions with House Divine, but like D-E-V-I-N-E. -E. Mm -hmm. um, during the traitor invasion of Malak, House Donar held the preceptory line against a Death Guard assault. Uh, oh. As the Death Guard drove the world's mighty jungle beasts in front of them to absorb Loyalist fire, the Knights of House Donar were quickly, quickly overrun and annihilated. Oh no! So there's no more uh, House Donar. They're, they're they've been completely annihilated by the Death Guard. Uh, yep. Dur oh. Later during Horus's defeat, the planet of Moloch. Oh wait, no, the planet of Moloch was liberated. Um, planet. Uh, the planet was conquered by traitor forces after the after the rival House Divine turned traitor. Oh no! You filthy backstabbers. And then, uh, with only a hundred survivors from the planet escaping. Oh boy, that's that's unfortunate. I was no, gonna say their uh, their logo looks like shit, but I I kind of like the idea of like they don't have any names or ranks. It's all just dependent on your accomplishments and your deeds. That's that's actually a pretty cool concept for like a night house, or just like if you did that with medieval knights in general, that'd be kind of dope. Like you only get. Uh, accolades and a name and a title when you've done something to like earn it. I kind of like that. Watch, watch has like the only reason they did that is because they killed all the fucking people. <laughs> <laughs> like, 
Like, notable <laughs> figures. Balmorn Donar, ruling lord, killed in the Battle of, of Moloch. Robar Dornar, Balmor's heir, killed in the Battle of Moloch. Luthius, yep. pilot, killed in the Battle of Moloch. Urbano, pilot, killed in the Battle of Moloch. Tyre, pilot, killed in the Battle, the Battle of, of Don yeah, Moloch. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. All rest, right. In, rest in peace, House Donar. You did your oh, best. Man. Yeah, Edley. Hey, you had fun hunting for a little while, and then you done got hunted. You, you done got stunk upon because the fucking... Yeah. The bastards. Death Guard... The, de the Death Guard stunted on you. Uh, give me a letter, DK. Uh, we just had D, so we gotta go with K. Nice. I know. Um, wow, there's a lot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Pick a number between one and thirteen. Uh, you know, let's just go thirteen. All right, House Creston, K R E S T E N. Oh, we the crash was right before that, which we just talked about. Damn, House right. Creston, the gallant Imperial Knights of House Creston were among the first into battle against Gruk. 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 Is that an orc? That sounds it's like an orc. It's it sounds like it would be an orc. G U or G R U K K. That's that sounds like got a, that's got to be an orc. It has to be an orc. Uh, Gruck face ripper. <laughs> yup, it's I an think, orc. I think it's an orc. <laughs> War boss Gruck face ripper, uh, also known as Gruck the. This is not an orc episode. Um, no. Also known as Gruck the Unstoppable, Gruck face Eda, and Gruck the Zoggin Maniac. <laughs> Is an infamous Great. infamous orc war boss, a goth war boss who led the Red War, um, and uh, he is a ten foot tall brute of muscle and rage. Makes Ooh. him a physical presence, makes him an intimidating sight. When he dons his monstrous power claw, he is practically unstoppable. Well known fact that Gruk will fly into a berserk fury whenever his temper reaches his limit. Doesn't take much to set him off. He once trashed an entire settlement purely because a grot attendant spilled engine oil on his breakfast. Oh boy, yeah, he sa he sounds like a mother. Like holy shit, like he's ten foot tall. Wait, I think he has a. Does he have a mini? Like how how tall is a knight's like leg? Like how far? Oh my the... god, he has a mini. Gruck does the the Zoggin maniac. Yeah. Oh, let's let, let's let's see this thing. He's got a squig. Hey, well, he's got a big squig. That is a large squig. I don't know why I was expecting more from his model with the with how uh, dominant they made him sound. I was I was expecting maybe a little bit more. He just he he, he looks like an orc, all right. That's definitely an, an orc, but it's just I don't know. I was expecting something special and unique. There That's he just, is. It's an orc. Yep, uh, he's an orc. He's, uh, he's, he's he's an orc, but he's he's got like a rule called too tough for death. <laughs> the mo the model is a five of invul say oh, he has five of invul and five of female pain. That's so funny. That's so that's so funny. He's got. Oh, that's true. He, he can't be bigger than Gaz, or he's gonna get his ass whooped. That's that's true. That's right. true. You can't you can't be bigger than him. Anyway, uh, not or, or, not sorry. an orc um, episode. Yeah. They were the gallant imperial knights of House Creston were among the first in the battle against Grux's newly arrived hordes, and they wasted no time charging the Greenskins. If these brave warriors had hoped to scatter the well-led and battle-hardened orcs in the same way the mighty peasants of the Alaric Prime, they were very mistaken. Only the steel hosts of the one six or 1652 Cadians ended the wholesale slaughter. So I do believe the House Creston did not do a good job. And oh. the orcs beat the shit out of them. Oh boy. Well, to be fair, I was like, oh man, the the knights couldn't stop some some orcs. And I was like, well, we did we read, read brutal, we've read cunning, brutal cunning, all right. And yeah. Boy, they yeah, knights are not a guaranteed win against the the orc horde. So yeah, I, I guess I guess they could absolutely get dominated by the orcs. Sure. Man, if you were if you were a fan of fucking knights, you just. And you read Brutal Cunning. You just, oh my god. <laughs> You'd be furious. <laughs> like, it's like, not even halfway through the book. And like these fucking knights and titans are just getting fucking dominated by the orgs. What's that? You're fighting a, uh, you're fighting a space marines, an ultramarine? Oh god. Oh, you're fighting an ultramarine primaris captain? Oh god. He has a name? Oh god. Oh god. <laughs> he has a name? Oh no, we're doomed. All right. Uh, give me another letter. Uh, pirate's favorite letter is the C. Oh, that was. Oh, all right, not bad. Um, all right, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight C's. I uh, gotta go lucky number seven. 
All right. House Coneal. Coneal? C-O-N-E-A-L-E. Coneal, I guess? Sure. Yeah, we'll go with that. Why not? Slide that. Um, oh, this is a short one. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck, oh god, oh fuck, oh god, uh, house oh fuck, oh god. Coniel is a knight house of the Imperium. It nearly came to blows with House Nanos. Nanos? Nanos? Nan, Nans? Oh no. Oh, House Nandos. They, no. Uh... No, it's worse, DK. Oh no, why is it worse? It's House oh, Na no. Nansus. Sus! It's oh, it's this, Nansus. They're so sus. Did they go traitor? Please tell me they went traitor. Oh shit. Due to their conflicting honor oaths, but luckily the tech priests negotiated peace before them. Oh, that's Damn. it. They didn't go traitor. That's let's it. Talk, let's talk about House Nan Sus. Yeah, let's go it for is, the, sus, the sussy Bacchus. It is an Adeptus Mechanicus aligned House of the Imperium <laughs> that serves Forge World Hephaisto. Hephaisto? That's, that's it? it hey, Hephaisto was in... Um, it's Brutal Cunning! It's Brutal Cunning! It nearly came to blows with House Coneal due to their conflicting honor as well. Luckily, the tech priest... The tech priest Ron Rule Ulatar negotiated peace between them. Hey! House Nansus would later defend their forge world when it was invaded by the orcs of the Tekwa and the free hey! boot of Bad Ruck M42. Due to their brave resistance, the orcs destroyed what for, uh, forces... Oh, shit! House Nansus was the one that got fucked up by, by fucking oh, Bad Ruck and the crew. Let's go! Oh, we got no! We brutal kind of nights. Oh, no. Ah, who cares? They man, were whatever. Man, what a fucking callback. What a callback. House Jeez. Nansus got fucking bopped on they by the by the bopped. orcs. They got they got space. They got airlocked. Man, what a this is an orc episode him, again. Yeah, it's, this is this is devolving into an orc episode. And Shy's <laughs> loving every second of it. Oh my god, Uftak fucking rolled up and bonked on them. <laughs> and it's like, you do that, boss? Yep. Yep. Dash me. Of course I did. That's me. Yep. yep. Uh, wow. What? What's uh? Give me another letter. Uh, let's try an A. Something an I never a. got in high school. A. Sunday Italians get plenty. <laughs> a. Well you got done. you got well eleven. Done. What you got? Uh, let's do three. House Alaric. A L A R I C. Okay, Alric. Oh. Okay, pick a different A. This literally just <laughs> has House Alaric is a night house of the Imperium that battled against the Red Wall. Oh. <laughs> and got fucking body. Wait, red, the Red Wall was was the one where Gut Rip a guy was it? Oh yeah. God damn! This is just a fucking orc this is episode. This an orc episode. How many knights are getting wrecked by orcs? Pick a different A. Damn it. Uh, one. All right, House Acosta. All right, all right, Acosta. There we go, it's right. a little bit longer. Um, Night House of the Imperium. It resides in Nethrius, uh, located in the Gilead system, but the isolational house normally does not concern itself with off-world affairs. Um, right. Let's see here. Uh, it's currently ruled by High King Vilmar, uh, and Nethrius is a volcanic death world. Filled oh. with giant creatures that constantly attack the void shielded cities. Where the world's population resides, each city known as the Dominion is protected by Acosta's knights and are ruled by one of the house barons, who in turn show fealty to the Acosta's high king. Currently, Vilmar the 14th rules the house, but each baron covets its powerful position and the throne of ivory knives the, th Whoa. the high king sits upon. Yo, that's that's the that's that's dope. That's pretty the dope. Throne of Ivory Knives. Let's go. Uh, now all I can imagine is like that Game of Thrones throne with all the swords, but it's all ivory. That sounds super dope. Oh hell yeah! In the wake of the Great Rift's creation, that's when Cadia fell. Gilead had become isolated from the Imperium, is now protected by the forces of a rogue trader who is absolutely terrible, mind you. Um, <laughs> Jackal Veronius. I only make that as a Caiaphas Kane joke. Um, okay. However, in order to procure Acasta's aid in defending the system, Jaquel, the traitor, has begun providing the house with off-world flora and the aid of the Adeptus Mechanicus. Vilmar has since become willing to help Jackal in a limited fashion and has sent a few of his knights to aid the road traitor. This has drawn resentment from some of Acasta's barons, though, uh, though, and some have begun secretly meeting with off-world envoys from other groups. 
Yo, Ooh. this rogue trader guy is fucking dope looking. What the hell? Who, 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 who that? Who, who? Jackal Voronius. Look at this dude. Let's see. Oh, damn. He does look sick. Bro, nice he's coat. got he's got nice. candle he's got lit candles on his oh shoulder my God, pauldron. They are. Those are lit candles. On wow, that's that's Imperium. That's top tier Imperium aesthetic is having like lit candles on your body or on your armor or whatever. Um, damn. Oh, should I want to know if you were gonna look at trader houses or if uh, we should expect that in a different episode? Ah, fuck it. Give me a <laughs> give me a, a a letter for trader houses. <laughs> Uh, how about B? B. There is. B. All right. There's House Biofane, House Blisterborn, and House Black. Blisterborn. Blisterborn. It has to be Nurgle. That better be it Nurgle. Has be. It has to be. House Blisterborn is a traitorous nighthouse. Oh, you can't tell me that's it. Is that's that it. all? That, that's, that's it. All, that's all. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Google it and, and yeah, see if there's... Yeah, Google that. There's got to be more. It's House Blisterborn. There's no lore about how, like, they fell to Nurgle and how the knight's armor is, like, all twisted and diseased and has blisters that pop and spew acidic bile I... all over people. There has to be. It's a Nurgle house. You are right on that one. But, no, there is nothing I can find. Oh, one. that's bullshit. Listen, anybody that is listening and is going to take part in the night art contest, someone make some dope ass blisterborns that are just all these like diseased giant mech knights that have like their armor peeling off and it's just all like you know, tentacles spewing out of their eyes or something. We need m justice for blisterborns. Justice for blisterborn? Yes. There's it not... is an injustice that there's not more on them. Yeah, there's not a ton. Also, that their free blades are known as dread blades, I believe. Oh, that's um, so, so they got cool. some cool quotes. Uh, quote: Open your heart to hatred. Open your <laughs> mind to fury. Open your soul to the dark ones. Let not your forebearers stand between you and the power that is offered. The sun has set on the age of chivalry, and the night that is to come belongs to those with the strength to assert their rule. The canticle of the warped becoming. Damn, if it didn't mean selling my soul to chaos for eternal damnation, that that kind of quote would very easily get me to go traitor. <laughs> it's like, oh, you're going to be called the Dreadblade, and here's this really dope quote. Like, oh. Yeah, have you, have you seen what some of these knights look like, though, man? I literally have not. That's, this is that's what, what a I'm, chaos I'm a... knight looks like. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, that's dope. It is really cool looking. Holy shit! I love the faceplate. Oh, like, like the, the screaming, like the screaming skull. Plate. Oh, yeah, that's great. What's in that other arm? Is that like a night sniper rifle or something? No, I'm assuming that that's their version of the Paragon Gauntlet and the Chain Sword, but it's like their chaosy version of the sword. Oh. Do you see? Okay. There's a little bit of blood on the white part. I think that's like the Z kind of part of it. <laughs> that's, that's, the that's, that's, that's how I describe it. Shut up. <laughs> that's the zzz part of it. That's where the claw goes zzz into your. Fl I gotcha. Gotcha. Yo, yo, you can't. No, you can't just run up at me and stab me. Ha ha. Night goes. <laughs> <laughs> Power claw goes. Zzz. Yeah, there there are a lot of people who do make really gross ass nights like that. There there are tons and tons and tons of conversions. For, for crazy shit like that. Man, like, it for, sucks for... that there's no, like, Nurgle Knight, because I feel like you could really get some gnarly, nasty bullshit with, like, a Nurgle Blisterborn Knight. Yes, I'm going back to Blisterborn, because they have been... That is... How how do you miss out on an opportunity to give lore to something as crazy as... You, you called it... Bl Why?! Sorry, go ahead. I mean, they, they do... People make oh, their shit. own versions of that quite often. They oh make God. super gross ass night looking nights like that. Yo, that one you just posted with like the the maw that's like yeah, screaming. That's so cool. That's what I wanted when you brought when we brought up Blisterborn. That's what I wanted. So, exactly that. So a reminder that the Chaos Knights basically have almost zero kits of their own. So when you make a Chaos uh... Knight, you're basically making a normal knight, and you're just Kit bashing, like you're kit bashing it exactly. Uh, okay, gotcha. So, 
So often you get these. That's why knights are so cool because you can really like, really just give them so much of this like effort, you know. And do you think they'll ever make a legit chaos knight that's just like all fucked up and you don't have to like kit bash it or green stuff it or whatever, and you can just get a chaos actually, knight? Actually, are gonna make that? Actually, I think they are. I think they actually teased some knight images just recently. Ooh. So there might actually be a legitimate knight model finally for for chaos. Okay. Okay, let's go. It better be a Blisterborn GW. Dude, stop that. Fine. No more Blisterborn. Fine. It's not my fault. You're right, it's not. It's GW's fault, but you know, stop it. <sighs> Fine. Uh, who are we doing next? Like, give me a number, or a letter. Um, We'll go S for sus. Oh my god. Um. All right. In that case, uh, one through eight or nine. Uh, two. Ha House Securus. S E K U R I S. <laughs> All right. Uh, I, I was very scared it was going to be House Securus. Securus. <laughs> I thought you were going to say it was House Suscaros, and I was like, Suscaros. Lol, lol, the betrayer. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, all right, this uh, has literally no lore on it. God damn it! Oh come on! Now I know I know there's gonna be chat that's gonna be like, why don't I just talk about like House Hawk Shroud and shit in that case? Because they all can. Some of these fucking night houses has so much hoity-toity lore. They can have their own goddamn episode on them. That's true. If they if it's a big enough house, we'll probably literally do an entire episode on them. But all right, you want to get some of these ones that don't exist? Why don't you pick one that? Uh, sounds I'm, I'm cool picking. To you? I'm picking a different S. I'm picking House Scythe. Ooh. All right, here we go. Here we go. Uh, oh, actually, this is pretty, this is pretty good. Uh, house Scythe is a night house of the Imperium that resides on a world known as Death's Welcome. <laughs> I'm assuming this uh, Death's Welcome is a death world, perhaps. Uh, but to find out, like the households of Drudge and Fer Fervens, Scythe is composed of morbid nihilists. Who have oh. foretold for of their household's destruction in battle. So when the splinter fleet of High Fleet Hydra invaded their world, Scythe's knights believed their destruction was at last at hand and gladly joined the houses of Drudge and Fervens in battling the Tyranids. The Knights of Death's Welcome took such a heavy toll on the invading Tyranids, though, that High Fleet Hydra's bio ships retreated and their with, after their reserves of biomass became dangerously spent, while through their efforts, Death's Welcomes was saved, the world's night houses were devastated, and just 18 knights remain alive from a starting force of over 400. Whoa. I mean, in all fairness, though, they made the Tyranids retreat. Dude, can you imagine you're you're a surviving member of House Scythe and your fucking uh, knight is like draped in the skulls of Tyranid monsters you killed? Dude, there's there 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 cannot be a more badass uh, knight to be. Like, well, I, is is there anything more accomplished than being like, yeah, I made uh, our house, we made the Tyranid run away. These knights are literally, they believe that the Emperor is the harbinger of war and ending. So, oh. uh, they go to war in knight suits of, they go to war in knight suits of sable and bone. Oh, while, is there a picture of one of these things? Not at the current moment, while singing fervent, what's that like, dir dirges? D-I-R-G-E-S? Yeah, sure, dirge, yeah. Dirge Van Dyer. Dirge Van Dyke. Like Dirge is a, a, is a mournful song or a lament for the dead. Mm -hmm. um, while singing fervent dirges from beneath their chainmail veils. Damn. Dude. Dude, can you imagine your night suit is of sable and bone and the face is covered by a chainmail chain veil? Uh, and, and, and your and your and you knight got dude, skulls all over your knight. Oh and your my knight God. dude has like a veil, like the fucking mask of the quiet one for destiny or whatever. Yeah. And then and then you're like you're singing like death songs, like oh accepting your own like with this fucking death core level of of suicidal uh, fervor. Why is there no <clears throat> Why is there no imagery of these? Why is there nothing else on these guys? Like they sound like the most badass knights that ever existed. House Scythe 40k. Is there anything? 
like, I, I am floored by how dope they sound. Like, yeah. they sound way better than, like, those hoity-toity houses. That are like, oh, let's spend four hours talking about how great we are. Beep, boop. And it's like, who gives a shit about them? Let's hear about the uh, house Scythe. Man. Uh, yeah, I'm Scyther. Not... <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not getting anything. This is ridiculous. How many opportunities are they going to miss out on? Oh, my God. I'm so upset. And they're on a planet called Death's Welcome, for Death's God's welcome. sake. Death's Welcome. How do you do Bruh. that? Maybe... Oh my, maybe, maybe they, they have to have a plan to do something with them. Like, at least write a book on them or something. It, maybe, just, maybe, they're maybe, so much cooler than any night I've ever heard of. Maybe House Drudge or Fervens have more lore about them, and that's because they're like, uh, nope. Ah, oh, these are so, missed opportunities galore. They are just piling up, GW. What are you doing? All right, give me another letter. Um, B for bones. Here we go. House Baragon. When its high king was abducted by a sorceress cult of Zinch, the knights of House Baragon left in search of him. This eventually led a group of knights to track down their high king's location in a tower in the, the world of Sintilus. However, when they entered to free him, they discovered the structure had the ability to bend reality. The knights were struck by the power. When the tower was finished, the stricken knights had been transformed into a mobile and lifeless crystalline statues now lined within their walls. Oh. When another of the Baragon's knights later entered the tower, the crystal statue suddenly came to life and began to fire on their fellow knight. Oh. Oh, boy. Well, that's unfortunate. All right, that one, no. Nope. Oh, boy, that's that's very sad. That's that's depressing. Um, well, this one here. House Belegerous. The noble bloodline of this house was almost befouled in an infiltration of the gene stealer cult of the <laughs> Withering Worm. Only the conditioning of the house's thrones and the mental effort of the Belegerous Knights prevented them from falling to the Withering Worm's brood mind. But when they recovered, they quickly attacked the cells. In a single night of violence, House Belligerous tracked down and exterminated every single cell of the Withering Worm and tried to infect them. Well, what was the name of the house before this one, where the knights turned into crystal and then turned on the... Uh, house the, the Baragon, other? I believe? I feel like that would make for some really slick, like... Um, Crystallized like you, knights? Yes! Like, either for, like, artwork or if you were going to, like... I don't know how he would paint something like that, honestly, because that sounds like they'd be tough, but that... A crystalline knight sounds really cool. I, I like... I think this is good, too, because anyone who's, who might be wanting to be a part of the, uh, the, the art contest might be getting ideas. Yes! Yes! I, I'm, I'm all for it. Let us look here. You know what? Let us pull out some free blades again. Ah, good choice. Uh, especially if anybody needs some more uh, inspiration. Yeah. Ooh. Madrigal, the Night's Watchman. Ooh. A tragic figure, Madrigal's stat status as a free blade is a result of a great loss. The last line of defense against a massive demonic incursion, Madrigal was unable to halt the murderous predations of the Servants of Chaos, and so his homeworld of Stygia fell. As the lone survivor, Madrigal's guilt at his failure led inexorably to a self-imposed penance that has no end in sight. Rejecting the heraldry of his house, Madrigal relentlessly patrols the benighted remains of Stygia, a dark figure outlined against the pale moon, striding through blackened forests and the empty shells of dead cities. As a result of demonic invasion, Stygia is a victim of fell sorcery and the dead rest uneasily beneath its surface. Madrigal haunts the dark places of his world to ensure victim, victims of his failure stay in their graves. And he watches warily for fresh warp taint, ever vigilant for signs of the demon. So his, Damn, so his that's planet, sick. that's so fucking edgy. That's so sick. I love it. That's I love so a good edge edgy. Lord. It's he, so edgy. He haunts the city that he couldn't protect. He his, his planet has been blackened by demons. And so he just strides alone in dead cities. So if, if he sees any demons that could possibly be his family and planet, he makes sure he kills them to keep the, their dead to rest. Oh my god, that's that's edgy and it's great and i love it 
That's, that's so fucking edgy. What the what, hell? What was man? his name again? Uh, his name was Madrigal, the Night's Magic. Watchman. Oh, that's so cool. I, I I love him. That's so funny. I that's great. That's fucking fantastic. Ooh, that makes yeah. up for that makes up for uh, some of the some of the other failures. Does it? Well, maybe a little bit. Not completely, but like you know, it's fine. Just just a little just better. A little, little, little bit. Like the the meters filled up like a quarter of the way. Okay, towards fair redemption. Enough. Not fully, but that, that that was that was pretty fucking cool. Uh, how about this one, the Crimson Reaper? Ooh, sounds like an edge lord. Let's go. First sighted during the Rithgard Crusade, the Crimson Reaper has come to signify death itself. Relentless and devoid of mercy, the Grim Knight Errant bears no other markings but those associated with death. Where House Livery would be uh, is wait, livery, House Livery. Would yeah. be is would be is black, and his personal heraldry is only the symbol of the Reaper's scythe. The knight is a single-minded destroyer, sending forth volleys of thermal blasts to melt tanks, crushing infantry underfoot, and ripping apart anything within range of his roaring Reaper chainsaw. In the early stages of a campaign, Imperial forces cheer to see this deathly marked avenging knight laying waste to their foe. It is never long, however. Before the Crimson Reaper's obvious disregard for those who fight beside him <laughs> oh, stifles no. this enthusiasm. Oh, no. His allies are forced to look away from his callous <laughs> deeds as their own soldiers are trampled underfoot oh. or caught too close to the thermal cannon's blasts. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Oh, no. He kills his own people because he's too uh, bloodlusty. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. SpaghettiOs. Uh -oh. Oops, accidentally stepped on my own troopers. Oops, I didn't check to see if any of my allies were in the in the blast radius. Oops, they're melted now. Oh boy. Um well, let's, let's at least see. he's good at what he does. I wanna I wanna do one of the, the ladies. Oh um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do 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 you do you know any of the specific lady freeblades? No, oh, I don't know I don't know any women. Oh. Yeah, well duh. I mean we're gamers, dude. Hell yeah, man! Let's go! Yeah! Woo, 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 woo. Please love us, ladies. Please, please. please. Uh, please do not I have subscribe. nothing in my life. Please, I'm so lonely. Uh, <laughs> Lady, Kal I think we talked about this one last time, but I'll remember uh, re-mention it. Lady Kalena Maxis, the Storm Walker. Ooh. When the Great Rift tore its way across the galaxy, the Night World of Camador lay directly in its path. Engulfed by the billowing mass of the Maelstrom, the planet was beset by tides of mutants, heretic stars, and demonic abominations. Led by the uh, garishly grotesque warriors of the Emperor's children. Oh, Though no. the Knights of Camador fought furiously to defend their world, in the end they could not prevail, and a single noble escaped the devastation. Lady Kalena Maxis, the Stormwalker. Kalena did not willingly flee the death of Camador. Rather, she was commanded by High King Arturo to spread the word of her world's fall and to exact revenge unending upon the forces of chaos and their murderous deeds. This Lady Maxis has done with a burdened heart ever since. Piloting her mighty knight Castellum, Lady Maxis haunts the fringes of the Great Rift, rallying Imperial forces wherever she finds them and leading them to fight back against the heretical foe. The arrival of the Stormwalker has turned the tide of many battles. Lady Max is dedicating each hard-won victory to the memory of her slain kinsmen. Damn, so dope, dope. she's a badass. So she's the only one that survived from that planet? Uh, apparently. Damn. Damn. What uh, a badass. All right. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do one chaos free blade before we end the episode because I'm oh, I like these free blades. Right, let's go chaos this, free blades. How does that work exactly? Chaos free blades. It's not part of the house anymore. They still serve chaos. Oh, okay. Uh, the hand the hand of mourning. Oh, <laughs> as in mourning, as in like mourning for the like dead. like mourning the dead. Yeah. Oh, was, really? I thought it was the hand that was pointing towards the morning sun. Huh? What do you know? You're a shitter. Yes, I am. Hand I'm glad of, you finally noticed. The Hand of Mourning was the uh, former Imperial Freeblade who sought unsuccessfully to defend Nemingast from an invasion by the Black Legion forces of Vorash Soul Flayer. Uh, despite their efforts, the Imperial world was conquered, and the two Freeblades were captured and brought for before the Soul Flayer. 
The Master of Possession then subjected the Freeblades to horrific chaos rituals for a oh. year before oh. each was finally being broken and sworn fealty to the Soul Flayer. The second Freeblade was pumped full of sludge, rendered oh. from the writhing corpses of the recently possessed, and the knight and its noble drowned in viscous fluid. Oh. Now reborn as the Hand of Mourning, the Master of Possession gave his loyal new Dreadblade a quest intended to increase its power. It was dispatched with a true name of an ancient demon prince and told to bring the creature back to the Soul Flayer by any means necessary. Boy, howdy. That's, uh... That's not fun. That is no moss. That is a whole lot of no moss. Uh, what's a Soul Flayer? Oh, it's the guy's name. Was, his name was like Harkin Soul Flare or whatever the fuck. Oh, oh, oh. So it was just like a, what, like a Chaos Space Marine or something? Or a Chaos trooper? Yeah, he's a, he's a named Black Legion Space Marine. Ah, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. I thought it was like a Soul Flare Chaos Demon or something, but it's just, okay, it's a Chaos Space Marine that just flays people and is a real big fucker. Well, I mean, they are Chaos Space Marines. Yep, uh, yep. Let's drown them in sludge. Oh, boy. Good time. Fun the fun. sludge of the uh, of, of the dead. I don't know why, but as soon as I said let's drown them in sludge, all I could imagine was these uh, night pilots in some sludge, but they've got like the uh, the little um, they've got the little floaties on their arms, going no no, and as they slowly sink, I can float, I can live. I don't know why. That's just yeah. Well, DK, if you ever need to be drowned in sludge. You know exactly where to go. Yeah, the soul flare, apparently. <laughs> and then get reborn as the hand of morning. Ah, yeah. Sun, it's so bright. Oh, it must be morning. Oh, 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 God. Oh, it, bur it fucking burns. <laughs> That's the hand of morning. Like when you when you first wake up and the sun is really bright. Like, ah, ah, I got to put my hand in front of the morning sun. And then and then he's like this this fucking co coagulated like mass of flesh. And he's just and they yeah. all giggle at the same time. They're like, ah. <laughs> That'd be a great meme picture for the contest. Like, oh, my knight, he's drowning in sludge, but he's got the floaties, so he's okay. He's he, It's a giant like a chaos knight, but he just has big floaties. <laughs> he's got floaties, and instead of, like, the big uh, chainsaw, he's got, like, a, a pool noodle. All right, this has been dumb. But it's been, <laughs> it's been dumb for a while. Don't, like, you listeners of ours know that this is the kind of bullshit you're supposed to expect. It is true. It is true. Mm -hmm. That being said, I, I today was a fun episode. It was very casual. It was very just oh, like, ah, yeah. eh, we'll talk more about knights and stuff. Yeah, casual, fun, uh, learned about some knights, learned that we want more on knights. Um, Yo, how scythe, come on now. Yes, how scythe and uh, blist, blist, blisterborn. Those two need way more lore. The fact, at least Scythe has Death's Welcome, and they've got, you know, the, the Chain Man and the Tyranny Helms. Blisterborn has nothing. At, at least, yeah, at least you have lore for Scythe. Blisterborn, you literally only like Blisterborn because its name is Blisterborn. That's it! it! It sounds like it should be so much cooler than it is, and it's just nothing. It, yeah, it, well, I mean, I'm sure there's some lore on there, but at the moment, the wiki doesn't give me much. Yeah, yeah, so. All right! Well, DK, big ups, well, big money, big bucks. Thank you, everyone, for watching this episode. That's yeah. ridiculous. Uh, you know, send us some stuff. You know, share some progress. I guess yeah. you can send us your uh, your submissions on Discord as well. But do your thing. It should be fun, good times. Make sure to check out Collectible Squids. Read yeah. the book. Buy some dice. Do all the things. And um, DK, do you have any parting words? Um, justice for Blisterborn. Justice for Blisterborn. Justice for House Scythe. More art for the art gods. Uh, that's L cool. Lore for the for the lore kings. <laughs> I, I was hoping you were gonna say lore for the lore god, and I'd be like, ah, lore for the lore gar. Uh -huh. Hey, my knight's got backstory. Hey, more lore for my guys. Hey, Let's oh my go. god, there's a bird outside my tower. Oh Jesus <laughs> Christ. Largo! Mamma mia! <laughs>